Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Marvel Snap video today doing something a little bit different when I wanted to talk about cards that could potentially need buffs in Marvel Snap. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like. Comment down below. Tell me what cards you actually think could use a buff. I'm currently in pull 3 and I've been there for a very long time. Uh, so I maybe don't know as much as the meta game of pool one and pool two and how people feel about it But based on looking at it, it seems I think it's pretty solid as it is But if you have a different opinion on how things should be feel free to tell me about it And do subscribe to me if you want some more videos featuring me. So Yeah, Marvel snap. This is also using the site uh, snap.fan because it's the easiest way to organize all this <laughs> So yeah, the if you were unaware Cards do get buffed in Marvel Snap. They got buffed and they get uh, nerfed all the time. During the beta period, they did it much more frequently and it was in large batches of it. Where not only did they nerf characters that they thought were too oppressive, but sometimes they just straight up buff characters who weren't seeing enough play. So with that in mind, that's kind of the mindset I want to go for this. In the Since it's released, we haven't had a big one. I think the biggest change they did was fixing Jubilee, which everyone saw as a nerf, but it was actually... Actually, no, she was never supposed to work this way. It was just an unfortunate glitch. Um, so we're going to see. Uh, hopefully, pretty soon, they should do some updates for it. For a good example, Jessica Jones got updated. She used to be a 5 cost, and then they dropped her down to a 4 cost, and they lowered her power just a little bit, but it was still reasonable for a 4 cost where she can turn into an 8. That's the kind of idea I've got, that i got going on here. So even though... Jessica Jones was perfectly fine as a 5 that probably not a lot of people play. They still, still thought it would be best if they actually just buffed her so maybe she saw a little bit more play. It wasn't about a whole big metagame shifting thing. It was more about trying to make cards as playable as they can be. And yeah, okay, that's enough going forward here. Obviously, this is the, the cards you get for level 1 through 14. No real buffs or changes needed here. All of them are perfectly fine uh, for where they are. Similar for the starting pool, actually funny enough, for the starter cards, I really do think that they should probably buff, buff Hawkeye. I think on a good day, I would say Hawkeye is maybe the worst card in the game, but I think he's kind of designed to be very simple. A one drop that turns into a two is just not great. <laughs> a one drop that can potentially be a three drop is not the greatest thing in the world. Um... Yeah, and in general, he doesn't really have, like, a like for example, with Odin, you can't really do much combo stuff with him because it would be it. But, yeah, besides that, I think everyone here is pretty solid. Hulk is very good. Abomination's good. Cyclops' good. Perfectly fine. Medusa's fine as a 2-4 uh, in the middle row. That's perfectly acceptable. Because, again, similar to how why I mentioned with Odin, if you did play Odin with her again, then she would turn into a... Six drop, which could potentially win you something if the person was caught unaware in some kind of situation, but yeah, these are all fine. Now we'll actually get into, and I think recruit season, every these cards are perfectly fine. Gamora actually recently have received a buff, so she doesn't need another one. So let's go into pool one. Now, pool one is pretty straightforward. I don't think some cards that you could say, like, oh, this card could probably need a buff. The reason I think, like, someone like Domino doesn't get a buff because you can't. Lower her cost without just making her a better version of Quicksilver. Um, and at 2 3, she's actually, for 3 drop, she actually is used in specifically a Cerebro deck, so you can't make her higher or 4 or something. You could potentially change her cost, so it would be a 3, but I really don't think it's needed. But that's definitely a card where most people would probably think, like, who uses this? And the, chance, and the answer is that she actually is used in a couple decks here and there. But yeah, off of this pool here, I think the one that usually comes to mind as to who could probably use the buff the most is probably Angel. Angel's a weird case because he has a one drop too that could potentially come out from the deck. But if you draw him, he's effectively worthless except for to be used as like Carnage Bait. And even then, you probably still use him as Carnage Bait. Um... Mm, yeah, other than that, I think four... No, here it is. Here he is. Okay. Mr. Sinister needs some kind of a changing or a buff of some kind. The way he functions now is that he's supposed to be a turn two that is effectively a four. Because he creates a clone of himself. But the clone has the exact same power as him. Uh, the problem is, is that it's usually not worth it for the amount of buildup that they have to put into him. Like, for example, waiting for the Wakanda Embassy, or then using him with Forge, for example. That would make him up to a 6, which would then mean you get two 6s, and that's a 12, and that's pretty nice. 
But realistically speaking, you would probably just want to use another two cost. So I don't know what they would need to do to change him specifically. I kind of wish he would work a little bit similar to how a later pull two card, uh, pull three card works, which is, I think he's around here somewhere. I think it is the hood. The hood effectively is a one is very similar because he costs two because he costs one, and then the six drop that he creates also costs one. If you put both of them together, you create four, which is the same thing Mr. Sinister is doing, except for the thing that you can do here is that because the hood creates a token that add, gets added to your hand, there's multiple ways to kind of abuse them and actually make it so that maybe like maybe you don't need to play them in the exact same spot. Maybe you can just create hood and then put them out somewhere and then you can find a way to return hood to your hand using Falcon or Beast or hell, you could even just use him as Carnage Bait or wait for you yourself to use Killmonger and then destroy the board and then after you use Killmonger kind of you're safe to put down your six drop one and then you're able to get rid of this negative two or hell you could even give the hood to your opponent if you're playing on a specific location there's multiple ways there's even a specific location that wants you to lose by having less power so in that case if you put the hood there you're winning so there's multiple ways to kind of use them that are more interesting and more varied I just don't know uh, what they were thinking with Mr. Sinister. He just feels like filler in your deck. In pool one, a lot of these cards at least do something interesting. For Sinister, it just feels like he creates a token and then he's done. And then if you go all the way to pool three, you can maybe use him with Patriot. But at that point, you may as well just use the Brood, which the Brood is Mr. Sinister with the exact same effect and can do the same thing except for he creates one extra. And that one can be used with the Patriot and stuff. Still not as good. I actually think of the pull three cards. That one probably needs a buff of some kind, too. Now, what they could actually do to change him, that is something I don't know. Because the way his effect works is very specific. Add a Sinister Clone to this location with the same power. I think what I would do is probably just make a zero-cost Mr. Sinister Clone and add it to your hand. At least that way you would have a little bit more leeway to do it with. You could then do combos like with um, Lockjaw, because you'll add a zero-drop who's also a two, but he's a Mr. Sinister Clone, so he wouldn't have any abilities. I think that would probably be better without actually like changing his stats in any way. Because I actually think if he were to be a... If they increase the cost and then they increase his power, it doesn't change the fact that... like. You have to actually be very careful with this, because if you actually give him too much power, maybe it creates an, an issue where it's like, let's say he was a 3 cost, 3 power, um, and then at that point if you give him plus 2 power from Forge, then you're creating a 10 on turn, at realistically 10-3, and, and that's really kind of difficult to kind of deal with, so something to think about, but I definitely think something with Mr. Sinister has to kind of give. Uh, Multiple Man, I think, is someone who... Actually, I don't think there's much of a problem with multiple man. I think it's the problem is with the move deck. Is that I think the move deck requires too much thought for not a lot of returns. But it's the main way a lot of people are able to use miles. And I think a lot of people kind of like using move now because of miles. But if you're starting new and you don't have miles, the move deck becomes significantly worse in a lot of ways. So something to think about here. Let's move on to pool two. Now here, it's a little bit more interesting uh, I think pool two ends up being the one that it's like the weirdest stuff. I think it's the rhino is actually the weakest one here. But even then, I think the rhino has this place. But the answer is usually for three three that just ruins a location, uh, removes its ability. I think he should probably come down to two cost because for two cost you can just use Wanda, and Wanda will be a two three. And she'll replace the location with a random new one. Most of the time, you don't actually want to ruin a location because you can take advantage of it. What you want to do is just get rid of a location so you don't have to deal with it. And as such, most people would rather just play Scarlet Witch because she's a turn earlier. You're able to react more. And she costs less, so it's much easier to use. And her on reveal effect could, in theory, be used multiple times so that you can have multiple kind of funky things happen. And with the Rhino, you just don't have that. So for that specific reason, I think he's probably the weakest on here. It's not to say that ability is bad. Like, for example, if someone uses Storm and then you Rhino, you get rid of their ability to do that right there. But that's such an edge case scenario that it's just never happening, in my opinion on this one. It's really weird. Uh, the rest of these, I actually think, maybe it's because the Vision is a 5-drop. I think the Vision should drop down to a 4-drop, because realistically speaking, it would help out move a whole bunch. 
Um, and on turn six, having one move isn't really going to do much for you. Like, I'm trying to think of the scenarios in which th he's usually useful, and the answer is is that I don't think you really use that ability to move all that often. Also, making his cost one less would make it easier for you to have a, lot, a, la a last ditch effort to kind of get miles on the board as well, which is always nice to kind of have. And for the rest of these, uh, they all seem perfectly fine to me. I will say, because this is funny, eh? Okay, Akaye and Nakia could use a buff, but they actually can't buff them because I've seen how they were pre-nerfed. These, this is their nerfed version. Okaye, they had to nerf at least two times. She used to be a two drop that gave plus two, and they changed her to a one drop that gave plus one because they found that no one was playing one drops, so they needed more people to play one drops. And then she became the best one drop in the entire game, and then they changed her to a two two that gave plus one. They never returned her plus two ability because that ability was just too insane. And uh, Nakia used to be that she gave the entire cards in your hand plus two. And then she became a random give any two cards in your hand plus two. And now she's literally just the two cards on your left. Those get plus two. The thing I would probably change about Nakia again is I think they could really just drop her down to... Because a 3-1? One, a 1 cost 3? If a card costs 3 and they only have 1 power, they better be winning me the game. <laughs> They better be doing something. And giving just plus two to two cards is not enough. It was enough when she gave it to the entire hand. That's worth something. But the way she is now, no way, man. In no way in hell is that worth it at all. Unless you're building a very specific deck. So I feel like they, should, they could probably drop her down to a two cost. Keep the one. If they want to go zero, they can go zero. But then her ability is give all cards in your hand plus one. And that way it's fair. It seems like the thing that they're sticklers for is the plus two is too powerful. Which I agree, especially with Black Panther now, giving plus two in the cards is very good. Which is why she's so hamstrung. But I think a solid plus one is good enough, is what I'll say on that. And that's how I feel about specifically this pool two cards. This one ends up being, I think, a little bit more balanced in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't know how well people are able to use Ebony Maw. But Ebony Maw definitely has its place in kind of other stuff. The only thing I would... If there was a thing I would change about Ebony Maw is like maybe make him a 1 cost 8. But really he doesn't need any kind of change at all. I think he still is used in specific decks that can uh, utilize him very well. Okay, pool 3. This one is a big one and there's a lot to go around here. So any of them that pop up I'll start mentioning them. Black Bolt, I think, needs to be dropped to a 4 cost, because this ability here where, on reveal, your opponent must discard the lowest cost card in your hand isn't good. I cannot... Im the only thing I could ever imagine Black Bolt being good against is Deadpool, and only if you're going second. Uh, by turn 5, you don't give a shit about <laughs> what low drop is in their hand. Because the most of the time, they'll just play high drop monsters, and if you're going to play a card that discards a card from your opponent's hand, you may as well just play Moon Knight. And it it's it costs lower, but at least you discard a card and stuff like that. They're just better five drops in general. Uh, they've buffed Black Bolt multiple times. No, actually one time they just made them stronger, but I don't think that's enough. Next, Black Cat. This is a kind of a, I think Black Cat should probably change change to the, the. So for three costs to have a six, that's pretty useful. The problem here is that if this card is in your hand at the end of your turn, discard it. Chances are, when you when you draw it, there's no way for you to use it, so she just becomes a free discard. So it ends up being like this card can be kind of useless if you're not running Morbius. I think like the Morbius and Ghost Rider, because at least Ghost Rider makes it so that you always have a card that's active in your hand, and Morbius gets gets just gets a free plus two, uh, plus two from a card being discarded. But other than that, there's not really much use for her, which is a shame because I actually really like Black Cat and I have this specific Wakandan version. I think. I own my bad, not Wakanda. She has the Iron Cat version. That's what it is. So I think, yeah, something should be changed here. I don't know if they want to... I feel like they should probably just make her a one cost. If this card is in your hand at the end of your turn, discard it. Because at least that means she's always active. Keep the six, because why not? Why the hell not? She would still be lower than Ebony Maw. Uh, a one cost at cost six, sure. That might be crazy broken, but to be honest, I don't see her being seen much play at all. Like, not even in a discard deck would you really see Black Cat, so... I feel like she definitely is warranted for some kind of buff of some kind. Uh, Brood is similar to Mr. Sinister. All the reasons I gave for Mr. Sinister needing a buff apply to the Brood. 
The only thing I'll say is that at least the Brood has one more copy of itself that takes advantage of Patriot, and that's about it. Um, Captain Marvel does not need a buff. If she was any better, she would break the game. Um, Crossbones needs some kind of a buff, I feel, but it's a little bit weird because I think what he needs to do is that he needs to maybe have less stats and be a three drop because at four you're competing too i think that's also the same problem with crystal is that they cost too much because when you think of four drops and specifically this pool you're thinking of cards like dracula who could potentially be used with apocalypse who can help kind of change the tide of the game hell cow who lets you discard two cards from the hand um you've got other cards such as uh <laughs> I'll get a rescue who could potentially become a plus eight. Um, Typhoid Mary, who's a 10 drop, who gives minus one to everything else, but there's a way for you to kind of take advantage of not be that affected by it. You have Wong, who's a turn four. There's like too many good turn fours where it's like, I don't think you can justify just a raw eight power on turn four. Let's see if I can go over here and take a quick look. See, over here, like Warpath, for example can be very good in a very specific deck, and he's also a 4-drop. Uh, Sandman, who's able to completely stop you and your opponent from playing more than one card. That's crazy. Like, all the cards that usually drop on turn 4 are very good. Enchantress, who can completely shut down ongoing effects. Um, Moon Girl, who copies your hand. <laughs> Namor, who becomes a 10-drop if he's by himself. Strong Guy might be the only one. I didn't mention Strong Guy before. Some people might think maybe you could buff Strong Guy, but the funny thing is is that he was actually nerfed. His pre-version, which was, I think, a two-cost two that got plus six when there was no cards in the hand, was too good. Everyone played him, and that's why he's currently the way he is. But you see what I'm saying here. There's too many good four-costs, and as such, both Crossbones and Crystal feel like they would be better suited off if they just showed up earlier. Especially Crystal, because Crystal is like a card that's like if it's in the middle of location shuffle your hand but by turn four you're basically just trying to get two cards to your hand and that's not enough i think she would probably be actually be better suited off if she was like a one cost one one like a one one like a literal one for one at the beginning of the game because you need to use her in the middle like i think i don't think you're suited by this card being powerful all you care about is your ability to like kind of swap your hand and yeah that's how i feel specific on that next i think you could probably do something with debris i think debris could probably just be used to be a little bit stronger herself because adding a rock to each location for both players is in theory very good but in actuality it's not as good as it sounds um and i think it's specifically because of her cost and her power just doesn't warrant it enough but if she was just a little bit stronger or maybe she cost a two instead and she had a little bit less power, I think it'd be a little bit more useful. But yeah, because right now the only real there's only real two decks that can take advantage of her. And one is one being very annoying and toxic, and the other one is just Patriot. And Patriot has better cards. At that point, you may as well just use Squirrel Girl. Because it's basically doing the same thing. Uh next though. Next though on the list though, we've got I think Hazmat could actually use a buff. Now, I actually used a whole bunch of hazmat. I think there's some hidden power here in the ability to go minus one. Scorpion giving minus one co two cards in a hand is extremely effective at winning. The problem here is that hazmat, as she stands now, gives your cards minus one. Uh, there is a card that is in the data mines who I believe is Luke Cage, who makes it so that your cards can't be affected by power weakening. And at that point, once that releases, she's a big buff to your field and then also a negative to your field if you so, just so happen to have her. If someone is running Luke Cage and you are using Hazmat, then she's effectively dead. Um, so I think they could probably improve this, and I think you could actually go a little bit further and give minus two to all cards on the field. That or maybe just make her a mini Scorpion, and then at that point, change it to a one cost and make it so that whatever card in their hand gets minus... Minus one, ah, but that's exactly what Scorpion does. Hmm, very tough card to kind of balance around. I don't know, maybe I'll see after Luke Cage gets released. I definitely think, maybe that is the buff to her, is the ability for your cards to not go minus one, but not your opponent's cards go minus one. It's a big difference. So I'll wait on that one, but I definitely feel like Hazmat has some potential, hidden potential, and we either need more cards to kind of support that idea of her kind of messing with stuff, or we need, um... 
parts like Luke Cage that prevent them their powers from being lowered. But we'll see. Uh, Kingpin. Ah, oh, man, I just never been a big fan of the Kingpin deck. The the move to this specific location deck has never been very good for me. Mainly because you need to have some form of setup. Now, I fought one person who was using this deck who was very good at it and basically disrupted everything and was able to get Kingpin off, but it required so much crazy levels of planning that I don't think most people are able to play that way or have that much luck. So I think it would be for the best if... And then also, <laughs> if you play Kingpin, then what's to stop him from just using armor and completely destroy your strategy? <laughs> I think he could probably be a little bit better. I just The answer is I just don't know what you could do to make him better unless making this card make it so that any card that moves to him is automatically destroyed that would automatically make him better that might make him a little bit too crazy good but i, I think it ends up being pretty perfectly fair there's no card on turn four that would automatically move your card to kingpin and stuff like that but yeah i think there's something that needs to be improved in kingpin i just don't know what in that in this case in this scenario without completely changing the way a deck functions uh, Human Torch, I actually think, should be buffed. I think he should be a 2-drop over a 1. Actually, no, because the Falcon... Uh, this one's tough, because I feel like Human Torch's entire thing is growing big and strong, and he's definitely able to do that, but then your entire day is ruined by a single Killmonger. Like, kill Human Torch deck just instantly folds. If someone uses Killmonger, there's no way for you to win. At that point, unless you're doing some crazy, like, levels of maneuvering him away from Killmonger. Uh, so yeah, maybe making it so that he can't be destroyed would be nice, but at that point, you would open a slippery slope of, like, why not other one-drops get that ability and stuff, so... Hmm. 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 It's tough. But... That's my how I specifically feel on Human Torch. I'd be more interested to hear how people feel if they've been using Human Torch a whole bunch, but I definitely feel like there's something that could be improved because an entire deck that can be stopped by one card kind of sucks. And a lot of your deck does revolve around Human Torch and making it more powerful. Uh, and the last of these that I think could be... I think there's only one more. No, there's two more. I think you could probably do something with Moon Knight. Uh, the only thing, reason I mention it is that Moon Knight actually fight. There's a lot of discard. There's a lot of good discard cards. If we look at just pure discard, um, we have Blade, Calling Wing, Gambit, Hellcow, Lady Sif, and at that point you just kind of are and Swordmaster. So Moon Knight doesn't have a place here because he's a three three that also discards your opponent's hand. But he's not strong enough. <laughs> Compare that to Swordmaster, who's a six drop. Or even Lady Sif, who has less power, has only one more power, but she specifically discards the highest card cost, which was ex which is extremely good if you're someone looking to get rid of the. Let's say you're using Death with Hella, and you're able to get rid of them that way. I think that's pretty good. Like all these other cards, just uh, Gambit destroys a card on the field, so he's going kind of more than one for one. He's discarding a card, plus he's getting rid of a card on the field. That's extremely good. Usually worth more than two power. If he destroys a card that's worth more then two power he's effectively doing more for moon knight than just being on the field mm. so i think he needs some kind of a buff because he ends up being just underused and if he doesn't have to specifically fit with discard if he could just fit in an in general kind of deck i think that would work out too because there's plenty of decks out there who don't mind discarding a card if it means your opponent gets one less card too unless you're finding a discard card a uh, discard deck then it's a little bit different mm, next I think the worst card on here now to talk about, this is the last one, is Rockslide. Rockslide is not very good. He's a 4 cost 6 power who shuffles 2 rocks into your opponent's deck. By the time you play him on turn 4, <laughs> your opponent has 2 turns to draw rocks. It's not good enough. It's I think it's... It's too RNG focused. A good example of what this card does in a better version of him is just straight up Korg. Because Cork costs one, he's two power, and then he immediately gives them a shitty rock. Perfectly fine, perfectly good. At uh, one cost, it's not too bad. You can play him turn one. Most people don't even play a card on turn one. Um, but he can definitely be used with, like, for example, if it's turn five, you want to play turn four, then boom, play him too. There's plenty of ways that you can use Korg that would benefit you in some way. Um, like for, <laughs> you could actually use Wong and then use Korg and then you would effectively be doing what 
Um, yeah, you would basically be doing what uh, your boy here, Rockslide, would want to do, except for you're doing it a turn later. But yeah, I think the ability here of just having a 6 drop that gives your opponent 2 rocks isn't good enough. <laughs> I think he should probably come out a turn earlier and be a 3 drop, and he gives your opponent 2 rocks at that point. Because I think at 3, again, like I mentioned with um, Crystal and Crossbones, t 4 costs too much for what a lot of other good 4 cards are out there in the game. Even in that kind of sense, you would also you could also play two two cards, and those two would end up being doing good, or one three cost and one one. Like there's so many ways that you can. If you're playing a pure four on turn four, then you want them to be worth it because they need to be better than one. All the other four cards that cost at least one that benefit you in some way, or they need to be better than two ones, <laughs> two two twos, uh, a three and a one, or four ones. You kind of have to think of it that way. I think. And Rock Slide, Crossbones, and Crystal all aren't that good to warrant it. Dracula is because he fits in one specific type of deck, and any other deck that uses him probably not so much. Drax, I fit, ends up making it work because of if you actually get it right, he turns into a 8, I believe. Yes, uh, plus 4. So yeah, he turns into like a version of um, Jessica Jones. So yeah, that's it, everyone. I think those are the cards that speak out to me that need a buff. If there's any specific ones you feel like, oh, actually, probably Spider-Man could use a buff. But if you make Spider-Man too good, then you kind of run into the problem of, like, then there's no reason to not use Spider-Man. <laughs> I think Spider-Man probably costs just a little bit too much to be a four. I think unless you're in a very specific scenario, you don't end up using him. You want to, in theory, use Spider-Man, but a lot of the times you don't use Spider-Man. But I think he's still perfectly good at 4, um, that he works out. But those other cards I mentioned could probably use a buff of some kind. If you have a specific feeling about how a card should be buffed or should be nerfed, let me know. Um, if, um, in terms of actual nerfs, I think the obvious nerfs are coming are probably coming to Zola and Wong, who will pay for the crimes of Black Panther. <laughs> As Black Panther is crazy stupid strong right now. Thanks to Zola and Wong, I think they'll finally probably hit Wong with a nasty nerf. I don't know what you do to Wong, um, unless making him a turn 5. Actually, yeah, making Wong turn 5 completely kills the deck. Uh, unless you're running a variant that uses, like, um, Wave or something like that. Yeah, you would have to then have to run Wave and you have to do a bunch of other concessious stuff, so it ends up working out. But that's a completely different topic. For now, those are the ones I feel like need a buff. If there's a specific card to you that feels like, hey, um, why didn't you talk about someone like uh, a good example is? No, not. <laughs> no one's asking for a Mr. Negative buff. For. I actually can't think of someone who was recently nerfed that would probably. Except for Nakia and Okaye. Those two for sure. Oh, and Agatha. Make Agatha better. Actually, they need to buff Agatha by making her stupid AI good. Do that, and I think you'll... I think Agatha actually has the biggest loss record of any card in Marvel Snap. She just constantly loses. She has, like, the most recorded losses of any single card. The second she hits the field, you know that the person is losing. It's so stupid to try and win with her because the AI is so stupid. But anyway, I digress. That's the video. I hope you liked it. Feel free to tell me how you feel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.